Something like that. Thank you. You're welcome. My buddy that's deaf came last week and he said he couldn't hear me. So I told him to sit in front of the speaker. <coughs> so, anyway. What? I told him such. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the, it's the 60s group. They get right in, the, right in front of the speakers and go. Huh? <laughs> then they, they do that kind of stuff. Come be blessed. Time for prayer, worship, intercession, pajama party for the ladies. You don't have to wear your pajamas. Just be comfortable, okay? Come, all you handmaidens. Wait, come, be alive with Jesus. At Living Faith Christian Fellowship Church, Friday, February 21st at 6.30 p.m. My beloved speaks and says to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Woo. All right. Praise the Lord. That's the 21st. I had one lady come last night, knocked to my door, says, where are the ladies? Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Thank God she didn't come from Winnemucca or something. Yeah. <laughs> she came from Silver Springs, though. It was a waste. And the call went out. And the call went out. <coughs> I'm sure glad you guys came today. Huh? It would have been lonely if we didn't, huh? Yeah, but I preach anyway. You do I kind of had fun. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I preached for ten years here without anybody listening. <laughs> oh, <you're so laughs> I would. I, I, that was before anybody came. Okay. Yeah. Not that they weren't listening when I finally got to talk to somebody. I come in here alone, in other words, and ripped it. Boy, I burned the tops off the pews. <sighs> Good thing I wasn't preaching to you guys, everybody, nobody would have yeah. Thank you, God. I just want to read you this thing I wrote down. It was just a thought I had. It's not what I'm going to talk about today, I don't think, or anything like that. I just wrote down, every society has some form of government. Because people must be governed by some sort of moral understanding. Legislation cannot dictate moral values, but moral values must dictate legislation for the common good. And interesting, every society has government, every one. Okay, some of them are called anarchy, but it's still a government. <laughs> now, the Aka Indians in Ecuador, I, I watched this show the other day, Beyond the Gates of Splendor. Anybody ever read Through the Gates of Splendor? Okay, this is a documentary on, um, 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 yeah. Jim Elliott and his wife Elizabeth, she wrote a book called Through the Gates of Splendor when they went down to South America in 1968 and all five of them got slaughtered by the Aka Indians they were going to minister to. And then their wives and families went down right after that and went down there to minister to them. Uh, right in the same village where their husbands got killed. It was an awesome story. It's an awesome story. Anyway, this story was the, the Indians, 10, 15, or 68, 78, 98, uh, 20 years later talking about their experiences with these people. Talking about how they killed them and how they speared them to death and where they poked them and how they changed. Anyway, they were governed, these people, by a mutual understanding that if you disagree with a person, you spear him. <laughs> that was their understanding of government. When you had a disagreement, either you, either you walked away or you speared the guy to death. So, four out of six people got speared. Everybody in their village had somebody speared to death. In other words, after a certain period of this going on, no Aka Indians would have been left. None at all. So these men, they came into that village and finally their, their spouses went back and they understood through the carvings of God that they weren't supposed to kill each other. Thou shalt not kill, right? Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. So they understood through these things, 90, I think it was 95% in a two-week period, or two-month period, no more people were getting killed. No. It, it eliminated the killings. Why? They understood a different set of moral values. They were governed by a different set of understanding. Okay? And so they were governed by the Word of God. And soon after that, they realized they couldn't even do the law. Therefore, they had to have a Savior. And anyway, the Gospel is, is just open to them. And now the, the grandson of the guy who, 
lied about these guys and got them speared to death. Now his grandson, which should have been buried with his dad because dad wanted him buried with him, he got speared and he was dying. He's, and so they smothered his daughter and put her in the grave. It was good to do this. But the mother wouldn't let him have her son. So the grandson of that guy is now flying uh, medicine and, and the gospel into different tribes in the backwoods yes. with an ultralight uh, hang glider type of thing. Oh, wow. Isn't that the coolest thing you ever heard? Yeah. Anyway, it, I just was thinking about government and why all oh, stupid governments, nasty government, government this, government that. Well, everybody needs to be governed. Everybody. And so, um, in fact, you can have a direct impact on the government of your country. Because the Bible says, sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness exalts a nation. Therefore, if you're living in righteousness and living by the word of the Lord, you can have your nation exalted. Because this doesn't start with the government people. It starts with grassroots people right. who will live righteous before the Lord. And the right to righteousness exalts a nation. Therefore, it matters who rules. Don't get me wrong. And who serves as, as our leaders and things like that. But it matters with us because righteousness exalts a nation. So it starts with you and I to live righteous before the Lord and therefore exalt our nation. And we can change our nation. Isn't that the coolest thing you ever heard? I want you to know the United States is still a, the nation that's sending the most missionaries into the world. It's still a, a, people who are sending the most money to missionaries all over the world. Preaching the gospel to as many. Still the main guys. And so still the gospel. There's more spent on the gospel in this country than anywhere else in the world. So if you think our country is going to hell on a rail, you better rethink. My brother told me one time, he says, you know, the spies went into the promised land and ten, ten of them came back with a bad report. He said two of them spoke good things. He says, don't worry about those giants. If God be for us, who can be against us? Let's go and take the land. Yeah, sure. Hallelujah. That's still my attitude about the United States. I love this country and I, I see it coming back. Uh, I don't see it with my eyes. I see it with my faith. I see it with my understanding of Christ and His gospel and things like that. So, I thought I'd just run that by you. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, um, uh, remember when John the Baptist was preaching and he said, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. In those days, only Gentiles were baptized into the Jewish religion. When John told people they needed to be baptized, the Jews were coming to be baptized. Therefore, it was a real step out of the ordinary for him to baptize people. And when they got baptized for the remission of sins, what happened to them was they changed. It was a baptism of repentance. Therefore, they, people asked him, what should we do? In fact, he told the people, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He told the people that. And then they said, what should we do? He says, well, and he named things. And it was all about treating their neighbor better. He says, don't cheat your neighbor, don't lie to him. Uh, the, the guards or the soldiers says, what should we do? He says, don't intimidate people and don't take bribes. Or, yeah, don't take more than you're worth. And then he asked, the, the lawyers asked him, what should we do? He says, don't, don't steal. Quit, quit, uh, <laughs> quit robbing people. Don't, don't do. So he told them little things like that. So there was a, there was a baptism of repentance. And I want you to know, uh, when you're baptized into the Lord Jesus Christ, there's such a change in your life that the power of God comes within you, but the message hasn't changed. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That word repent is a powerful thing. It means don't do what you're doing, doing something else. People say, well, you're getting back to the law. Well, I want you to know when you're a Christian, you do the law. That's right. Because it's written in your heart, it's written on your mind. You're not, you're not nasty anymore, you're not terrible anymore. When you are nasty and terrible, you get this bad feeling in your heart and you repent right away and you go back and apologize. So it's written there. It isn't, it isn't we go back to the law to be saved. It's because we have become righteous in Christ and we've become new creatures in Christ. Now we get to act that way. We get to act in a repentant way. So if you're being nasty to people and things like that and think you're getting away with it, you better get saved. Mm -hmm. Better get right with God. If you think that you're going along in sin and then everything's just hunky-dory, you've lied to yourself. you deceived yourself somewhere along the way. God isn't some dork 
that he doesn't understand what you're doing and what's coming out of your heart is wrong and bad. God is not confused. Hallelujah. You need to come back to him and cry out to him and say, Lord, fill me with the power to not do that ever again. I come to you in Jesus' name. Remember when we, we, we decided to uh, uh, have a, a negative fast here last year? So we had a negative fast for 40 days. We were not to speak anything negative. Now I want to ask you a question by the show of hands. Who all here spoke something negative in that time? <laughs> Duh. So it is something that grows. It's something that happens and we get better at. Okay? We, if you're speaking negative all your life and you get saved, the, the heart of God is within you and things like that. And you feel bad about what you do, but it doesn't necessarily change what you do. What we need to do is learn what's right and what's wrong and what to say and what not to say. You know, you don't come up to somebody. In fact, I've, be, I've become a better counselor in my end days here. Like I told you before, when people used to come to me for counseling, they'd go away crying. <laughs> Grown men go crying and, and cussing me out and things like that. Why? Because I told them the word. You know, and I told them, well, if you didn't like the word, why'd you come over? That's how gentle I was. Now I'm a bit more diplomatic, but the truth is the same. The truth is the same because somebody comes up to you and explains to you all their problems. They say, listen, God loves you. God loves you and he has good things in store for you. And it just goes right over their head. They don't hear that at all. It doesn't mean anything to them. They exalted their circumstances and what they're going through above the love of God. Right. That's what's happened. They've magnified their circumstances. The Bible says, let us magnify the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. So when you tell somebody that God loves you and they don't respond to that, something's wrong inside of them. You need to encourage them, build them up. Hallelujah. So now that I've preached three quarters of my sermon, I don't have anywhere I'm, I don't have any idea where I'm at. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, um, in Ephesians 4, go there with me, would you please? Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Um, somebody's talked about walking in the Spirit. It's like walking through a fog, okay? And I don't know if you've ever been to Oregon. I went to Oregon when I was a teenager, or no, I was in college. And I went to a gymnastics meet there. And I went for, out for a run before the meet. And, and it wasn't raining, but I got soaking stinking wet. I mean, I was soaking wet. The, 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 the water was dripping off of my hat when I got back, and I thought, what's up with this? I was walking, I was running through like a fog. That's what it is to be immersed in the Spirit every day. It's like you walk through this wonderful uh, soaking fog and you get so wet that you're soaked and baptized in the Spirit. That's why we come into the presence of God every morning before we go into the presence of people. If you're talking to people before you're talking to God, you're goofing up somewhere. Make your first thing the first thing. Talk to God first, otherwise you're going to be a jerk to whoever you're talking to. Or maybe not as much as me, but it'll happen to you. In the fourth chapter of Ephesians there, in the 13th verse, uh, what do I need to pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the things you said in my heart today. I thank you for the things we are all going through. And we are excited about what we're going through. We are overjoyed by what we're going through, God, because the testing of our faith works such a wonderful thing. It's precious to you. It's precious to me. And I thank you for it, Lord. Help us each one to remember that we belong to you. Amen. Amen. Um, and the 13th verse says, oh, uh, yeah, right, 13. No, we got to read the other one. It doesn't make sense. In 11 it says, He himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure and stature and fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> every, every person that has a desire to walk in the supernatural, everybody does. I want you to know God has placed eternity in the heart of man. So all men want to walk in the supernatural. Everybody. How do I know that? Look at the television. The most worldly thing there is, the movies and the television, the most worldly thing there is Hollywood. Look at what they're doing nowadays. Everything you see is supernatural. Ghostbusters, ghost hunters, ghost trappers, um, uh, supernatural stuff like uh, 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 the Hulk, 
and Captain America and you know all of those guys they all have some supernatural ability and everybody loves it I love a hero man I like Captain America when he went to jump out of that jet and he, he says well you're going after a god he says there's one god man and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that <laughs> yeah that's right it was so cool I thought good for Captain America he's being an American praise the Lord all right okay <clears throat> When you first experienced the supernatural things, when you were born again, you experienced a supernatural change in your life. You experienced a removal of guilt, a removal of shame, an infusion of love, an infusion of compassion for other people, a desire to be around the people of God, a desire to see the things of God, okay? You became a spotless child of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> In 2 Corinthians 5.17 it says, uh, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Mm -hmm. That thing, it says, he's a new species. Okay? And then we went to Acts 1, 8. It says, you were, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, shall receive power. Then we go to Acts 2. He says, you get, when the Holy Ghost came, he baptized everybody in the Holy Ghost, and they started preaching the gospel like a bunch of drunks. Hallelujah. This is good. I don't know what you acted like when you were a drunk, but I danced on tables and flew off of bars and, and danced all night and got crazy and things like that. Yep. I taught a girl how to fly hang gliders in a bar. <laughs> in a bar. I got thrown out because I jumped off the bar on all these tables because I said, this is the way you do it. <laughs> and they threw me out. They're going to beat me up, too. <laughs> now, in Romans 12, 1 and 2, <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah, I ain't going to tell anything on James there. <laughs> Pep's so good at shooting pool. You don't have to buy drinks when you're in the Pep. You just don't have to buy any drinks. You just, they're lined up there in the bar and think, gee, we're great for this guy. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, now, it says there, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, some of us have decided to do that, to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Look what it says, holy and acceptable to God. Okay. Now, look, look, at, look at this second verse. It says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we become this spotless child. Here we are. We <coughs> decided to walk with God. In 2 Timothy 2.21, it says we are prepared for every good work. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it says over and over in Timothy and uh, those little epistles, it says, maintain good works. Now, do works get you saved? No. No. But are they right to do? Yes. If you're not got good works in your life, something's wrong. Please understand. Maintain good works. All right? Now, let's go on. Ephesians 5.30 says, we are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Woo! In 1 Corinthians 6, 17, it says, We are one spirit with Him. Amen. All these things are true of us. Now watch this. So are we satisfied that God is accomplishing everything that He wants to do in our lives? Let me read that again. So are you satisfied that God is accomplishing everything He wants to? No. no. Me neither. I am not satisfied that God is accomplishing everything He wants to do in my life or in yours, for that matter. I think the time is coming, though, that John 4.12 is going to be manifest all around us. In John 4.12, it says, Greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. Amen. We're going to do greater works than Jesus. So that time is coming, okay? Our job is to walk in love. <coughs> now, in Ephesians 4.15 and 16, uh, sorry, I turned off of that. Ephesians 4, it's after that, okay. You have this all written down. Huh? 15 and 16, it says, But speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working 
by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Ooh, hallelujah. So we're to Look at that. It says, speak truth in love Amen. that we may grow up in all things into him who is ahead in Christ. So we are to speak the truth in love. I know a lot of people who speak the truth, but they have no love in them at all. It just rips people apart. That's right. You ought to be doing that. You say, call yourself a Christian. What the heck's the matter with you? And, you know, and they just lay it on you like that. Even sinners will do that to you. Well, they're, you know, drinking, you know, smoking the doob and snorting coke. Say, you call yourself a Christian? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I love that stuff. I want people to challenge me. I want the sinners in this world to challenge me. I want people to say, you're not acting like a man of God. I want that. You know, if they think I'm not acting like a man of God, maybe I'm not. Maybe I need to change something. Oh, yeah, but God is going to change me. You, need that, you don't need to leave up to God what God has left up to you. There's some things God has left up to you to do after you are saved. Hallelujah. He's told you, to grow up. In all things, grow up so we can grow up. It's time we quit acting like a bunch of kids, fighting with each other, bickering with each other. And every time something bad happens, we throw our hand over our head like this. And say, oh my, why is this happening to me? Praise the Lord. Is it too, too quiet over there? <laughs> it's the sun. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, so our job is to walk in. Okay. Now that word edify, that word down there, it says, uh, every part causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Now that word edify is, to, is like to charge up a battery or to pump up a battery. Now well, listen to that. Causes growth of the body to the edifying, the charging up, the pumping up of yourself in love. Okay? Uh, if So... When is the last time you pump somebody up in their faith? It's not wrong to quote scriptures to people who are in a bad way. It's not wrong to help somebody walk in faith when they're not walking in faith. It's not wrong to come to somebody with the Word of God when they're so screwed up they can't even see their nose in front of their face. It's not wrong to do that. If you're coming in love to build them up, if you're just coming to tear them down and goof them up, then it's not right, it's wrong, it's the letter of the law, you're trying to kill them. Amen. But if you're trying to give them life and build them up, it's not wrong. Amen. Sometimes I get in my head that it's wrong when somebody comes to me and they're like their baby has died or something like that, and I don't know what the heck to say. You know? Sometimes you just need to shut up and listen. That's right. But sometimes you need to speak into their lives the Word of God. You need to speak into their lives something from the Lord. And God will give you something at that point of time, especially if you've been in the Word that morning, especially if you've been in His presence that morning, especially on the way over to your house, their house you were praying and seeking God for what you should say. Praise the Lord. Tony went to a, uh, to a guy in California. God moved on him to go clean to California somewhere, way the heck over there, to talk to a lady. And when he got there, her husband had said that she never listens to me about God. She won't talk to me about the Lord. She just won't talk to him. Tony showed up, and he'd been praying the whole way that the Holy Spirit opened doors. And he talked to her about Christ and her soul. And she prayed with him to receive Christ and got all excited. And they took communion together. And then, what was it, a month later, she died. Um, Glory to God, man. Oh, Glory to God. This is the Lord. If Tony wouldn't obey, she'd probably be in hell. Do you understand how important you are? Or do you understand how important it is to listen to God and do what He says? Yes. Just do what He says. And don't do what He says not to do. Well, I don't know. That's <laughs> sometimes, I want you to know that sometimes it is physically painful to do what God tells you to do. Or don't do what He tells you not to do. Sometimes it's physically painful for you to stop and not do that. Amen. I testify to that. Yes, most people would. Especially people that have been addicted to something. Painful. I mean, you ever went through the drawls of anything? You know? <laughs> Addiction. Must have, cannot do without. Must have, cannot do without. I'll steal from my mother to get it. Ooh. So I'm addicted. Yes, I am. 
I'm addicted to the presence of God. I'm addicted to prayer and, and Bible study in the morning. I'm addicted to studying the Word of God. I'm addicted to listening to the to the Word on 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 the on the on the you know little CD thing. I'm addicted to that kind of stuff. When I get in the car, I love country western music. Don't get me wrong, and I listen to it. But boy, I'm back in the back over there to uh, what is it called? Caleb. What is it? Yeah, Caleb on the satellite thing. It's the message. Okay. Hallelujah. It's awesome stuff. And it just keeps singing these worship songs and pretty soon you're just going, yeah, I feel a little more peaceful now. Instead of, you pick the time, find time to leave me loose you. <laughs> Poor hungry dog and a pig in the field. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> praise the Lord. So we've had all the experiences in God, okay? Um, I wrote down here... And, and I, that thing about what God loves you, you magnify your circumstances above the love of God. Okay. Um, when we make Him the biggest thing in our lives, He comes through. Can you, oh, by the way, when you magnify the Lord, you can never make Him in your heart or your imagination bigger than He actually is. Maybe. You cannot imagine God. The Bible says magnify the Lord. So when you make Him the biggest thing in your life, no matter how big He gets in your life, He's way bigger than that. That's right. <laughs> the yes. 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 How good is he? How much love does he have in him beyond what you can explain? Uh, there's, I read a thing by, uh, with, uh, I think it was Kenny Copeland or one of those faith guys. Um, this lady in Russia, I got a letter from her. And she was talking about how, this, uh, how she had received the word of God and God had given her a place to live and God had given her food in her on her table and different things like that. But she says, this thing about... The airplane, she says, I, I, I realize that uh, we're supposed to believe God and stuff, but I just, she says, I just don't need an airplane. He says, I just, I just don't want to, I just don't want one. It's going to be trouble for me. I'll have to buy gas and find a hangar for it, stuff like this. He says, it's all the same to you. I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, not have an airplane. It didn't occur to her that God wasn't able or willing to give it to her. She just didn't want it. Isn't that the coolest thing? Sometimes, if you're traveling all over the world to preach the gospel in different places, if you need an airplane, God will give you one. If you ask Him for it, people are going, oh yeah? Okay, get a puddle jumper if you want. Me, I want a, I watch them babies take off. The Lears, they take off like this. The puddle jumpers take off like this. I'm serious, it's that different. If you've ever rode in airplanes and stuff like that. We used to take off from Ely. Oh, that was really... I took off from Ely once and we're just a little overloaded. The stall buzzer went off for two minutes. Oh, man. 120 seconds. Tick. 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 Long seconds. Tick. Sweat was running down my boss's face. He's a pilot, right? It's running down here like this. I'm going, Lord, that God, thank you, Jesus. I ain't dying on the airplane today. <laughs> you learn how to pray in those situations. Anyway, praise the Lord. It was fun. So, it's what we're willing to believe God for. It's what we're willing to believe God for. If it's in the Word, do you believe you can have it if it's in the Word and it's a promise from God? Yes. Okay. So, what do you believe in God for today? I'm not talking about. Oh, Lord, I'd I really like one of those. Thank you, Jesus. No, no. I'm talking about believe in God for something. If God says, you need to get this, like prosperity. Let's t talk about that for a second. If you want to be prosperous, and the Bible says you should be prosperous, right? Doesn't it say that? Yes. If you haven't figured that out yet, you need to go into the Word and find that out. If God tells you you're supposed to be prosperous and you're not, maybe you ought to start seeking God for that. And saying, no. I, God supplies all my needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But this bill just came in. So what are you doing with that bill? Are you saying, Oh my God, I don't have that kind of money. Or are you saying, God will supply my needs according to His riches and glory. And when those other things come out of your mouth, what you do is say, I cancel that in the name of Jesus. Because it's going to come out of your mouth. It's going to be there because you don't know how to do it yet. Okay? Some of you have done this for over a period of time and now you've learned and so the first thing that comes out of your mouth is the word of God right. praise the Lord okay yeah. we need to go into the word every day otherwise all this just becomes an empty formula 
just becomes a formula and it's empty. It's, it's not the word, it's just a formula. Although it's based on the word, it's not a formula. Formula is just a work. Okay? What you do is base your faith on the word of God. So what we do is go into the word every day and read the thing with our eyes, sometimes speaking it with our mouths so our ears can hear it so it drop into our hearts. These are important things. We've been preaching this how long? I preach this almost every week, that we need to get the word in us. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Faith comes. I like faith. Praise the Lord. Now, so, um, <laughs> some of us think that obeying the word of God is a drag. Or impossible. Correct? I mean... Let's go to Deuteronomy just for a second. I love these scriptures, therefore I'm going to read them. Just fun. Isn't serving God getting fun? Amen. It's getting fairly drastic, but it's getting pretty fun. And I like drastic. I like crazy. I like to be challenged. <laughs> I realize everybody doesn't like to get challenged. Everybody doesn't like you to challenge other people. They don't like to be challenged. They want to go on. They want to, you know, I got this thing down. I got my faith down. I do what I'm supposed to do. Everything's just fine. I'm okay the way I am. Don't, don't mess with me. Me and God are okay. Hmm. <laughs> it's, praise the Lord. Live, man. Live the way you need to live. Deuteronomy 6, it says there in 17 through 19, You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, His testimonies and His statutes, which He has commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord. Get that down. You shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you, and that you may go in and possess the good land of which the Lord swore to your forefathers, to cast out all your enemies from before you, Amen. as the Lord has spoken. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. So it's important, basically, to obey God. Amen. Okay, I just thought I'd bring that, because I don't preach that too much. Okay? It's important to obey God. Does it get you saved when you obey Him? Well, yes, when you asked Him, you know, confessed with your mouth, believed in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and you got saved. Yes. Now, it's still important to obey God. I've actually known some people who decided that they could do whatever they wanted to and not obey God and do what He says used to argue with God all the time. Now, arguing with God ain't bad if you're doing what He says afterwards. If you argue with God and don't do what He says, that ain't cool. It's not cool. He, I don't know about you, I want... Not that I've ever done that. But I want... I want the blessings to continue. I want the blessings to expand. I want the blessings to get bigger. I want to go on with God. Simple as that. And I believe that if you don't say no to God, the blessings never stop. And they increase and increase and increase and increase until you die. Mm. That's what I believe. If you say no to God, the blessings do stop because He cannot bless you if you're in disobedience. It's just right. it's not the way it is. He still will because He's great and awesome and loving and powerful and kind. But hope is a good thing. But hope does is not is not doesn't get you anything unless you mix it with faith. Unless you believe God for something. You can believe God would and could, but do you believe God will? you got your hope out there in the future. I believe I'm going to heaven, and that's a good hope in the future. But if all our hope is in the future and we're not using our faith to appropriate anything from God now, then our faith is just kind of a... Yeah. It isn't, it isn't, it isn't creating anything. You're not using it. You're not using it. You need to use your faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Not after they get to heaven. They shall live right now by faith. By what they believe, not by what they see or hear and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Who's in control matters. Um, you've been made righteous. You've made, been made the seed of Abraham. Join heirs with Christ. Seated with Christ in the heavenly places. You have authority not only in your own life and destiny, but that of your nation. You can cause your nation to prosper. Okay. The life of obedience is a life of faith based on God's Word. Now I'm just going to run through this stuff I wrote down, okay? You think you can have whatever the Bible says. I ask you that. Okay. 
What is the criteria of having whatever the Bible says? Believe. What? Believe. believe. Absolutely. You can have whatever the Bible says if you believe that you can have it. Therefore, you can have it. Okay, now watch this. Do you think you can have... Okay. Does God keep His promises? Okay, if God keeps His promises and He's promised some things to you, why do we act like He hasn't promised it? What has He promised you lately? What have you read in the Word of God that promised? Give me a couple examples, would you? He'll never leave us or forsake us. Ooh, hallelujah, that's a biggie for me. He shall surpass all understanding. Hallelujah. Right, this is a God in Christ. Yes. Anything else? He's the light of my path. I'm He's my path. Oh. He's my light. He's my way. Yes. He promises the Lord about His business. He takes care of everything else. Absolutely. It's a greater work than these you do. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, so when we say these things, we need to get in a position where you can use them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some people not put themselves in a position where the supernatural is required because they don't have, don't think they have any supernatural power. You won't put yourself in a position where supernatural power is needed because you don't think you have any. Like if you come up to somebody and they're talking in the, the line over there at Walmart and the guy says, uh, you know, um, I've had this real pain in my leg right here and it's really been bothering me of late and I think I'm not going to be able to go to work or anything like that. And you hear this happening, right? He says, I just don't know what to do. At that point in time, if the Holy Spirit speaks to you in some little way, okay, he says, maybe you ought to pray for that guy. What you need to do is go ahead and pray for him. And leave it up to God whether he heals him or not. Because you can use your faith for his broken leg. I've seen this happen before. I've seen it happen before. A bunch of people, a bunch of guys real, real powerful faith are walking and they're pray, they wanted to pray for a guy. He said, I just don't have enough faith to do that. He said, don't worry, we got enough faith for you. What happens at that point of time? It builds them up and it exhorts them to a place where they can receive from God. It really does. It's amazing. When you say, I've got enough faith for you, can I pray for you? Well, sure, go ahead. Most people will say that. Now, most of them don't think you're going to come right over there and lay hands on them and smear oil all over their head. But, <laughs> but they're ready for you to pray for them. So go ahead and do it like you do it. And don't worry about them. Okay. In 1 John 5, 4, it says, This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Do you want victory in your life? Okay. Mark eleven twenty two. What's that say? Okay, let's go there. Somebody, somebody look up Hebrews 10.38. I'm going to get to Mark before you anyway, so. Hebrews 10.38. Mm -hmm. I got the 11.22. Mark 11.22 says, So Jesus answered them and said to them, Have faith in God. Okay? This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Hebrews 10.38, it says this. 10.38. I'll be here before 10.40. <laughs> but my righteousness, one shall... But my righteousness, one shall live by faith. And if he shrieks back, my soul has no pressure in him. Has no pleasure in him. No pleasure in him. It's not heavy pressure. I'll read that again. Right out loud. Thank you. But my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Did you get that? God's soul has no pleasure in you if you're not living by faith. What did you say? Doesn't God still love me? Oh, yes. Doesn't God still care for me? Oh, yes. There's no pleasure. You ever had a rebellious kid? <laughs> And at one time or another, they were not bringing you any pleasure. <laughs> okay, that's the way God is. He didn't throw you out of the family or nothing. He just says you don't bring him any pleasure. So go back to living by faith. And quit goofing around. It's the same as it. Hebrews 11.6. Uh, it says, without faith it is impossible to please him. So if we're looking for God to have pleasure, which I'm looking for God to have pleasure, I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Not say, enter in thou that has got thy tail burnt on the way. 
You know, I want them to say, come on in, good and faithful servant. You did what I told you, you kept the faith, you ran the race, now they're set up for you a crown of righteousness. Hallelujah. Just like Paul at the end. Right? That's what we want them to say, right? Yes. We've got to come to the place where we really believe that God is God. And if you believe that God is God, He can do anything. And when you see in His Word something that He can do, and you're in a position that you can get that thing done, go ahead and step out in faith and believe God to get that thing done. And speak that scripture over that thing. And speak to that mountain and make it be removed. And don't say anything different than what God has told you to say. Just because something doesn't happen right away, don't you back off of that thing. If God spoke that into your spirit, keep saying it until it comes to pass. I don't care if you die saying it. Still the truth. If God gave it to you, it's still the truth. If you die saying it and it hasn't happened yet, it'll happen. Amen. It's just the way it is. Everything you say in faith that God gives you will come to pass. Amen. It's just the way it is. Either, God is. either that or God is a liar. Okay. So why is faith important? We can't receive what He wants to give us without it. We, we just can't receive what He wants to give us without it. You've seen people, religious people, that read the whole Bible 63 times and never have received anything from God. Right. Because they just have not believed God to give it to them. you got no faith. The children of Israel lived by the law and kept going and going and going and going and going. And they did not mix what they heard with faith. Therefore, they did not enter into his rest. You know what Paul wrote this in Hebrews? Number 39, he goes, he, Paul writing it, is already a man of faith yes. for us. Because in 39, but we are not of those who shrink back Amen. from destruction. We but are of those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. Amen. He's already talking in faith to those who he's written to. Absolutely. So what we need to do is quit sucking our thumb and twirling our hair and telling everybody how bad we are, telling ourselves how bad we are, that we never have made it, we haven't done this, we haven't done that. If you're not doing it, turn away from whatever you're doing wrong and turn to doing right. The thing is, oh, oh, it's not that. It's glory to God. From this day on, I draw the line on the sand, I step over this line, and I don't care what happens, I'm going to walk with God from now on. You've got to get get real about this thing. Otherwise, you know, what is it? i got to just read some of this stuff. And we got a couple minutes anyway. It says, Jesus went to the cross and took the curse upon Himself so we could be redeemed back to God and be blessed again. That's why I did it. So we can be redeemed back to God, correct? Redeemed means bought back and brought into fellowship with God Almighty again. The creator of the universe. Salvation, deliverance, healing, prosperity. John 10.10 10 says, I have come to give you life and that more abundantly. We can't leave up to God what He's left up to us. He gave us the responsibility to receive His blessings by faith. It's our responsibility to receive by faith. It's not up to God. I hope you listen to this stuff. Even salvation is by grace through faith. You don't get anything without it. Okay? All right, let's go on. Hebrews 11.1 1, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. Amen. It's substance of what you hope for. It's evidence. It's the down payment. It's the pink slip. Anybody ever believed God for a car before? Yes. Okay, if you believe God for a car, say I was in Reno and somebody gave me a car but I couldn't pick it up that day because they were fixing it, but I came home with the pink slip. That's what faith is. Yeah. It's the pink slip. How do you know you got a car? Well, the pink slip's right here. Yeah. Got the receipt? I got the receipt. It's right, it's right here. It's already paid for. Here it is. Well, how do you know you're saved? <laughs> I got the pink slip. Well, how do you know you're healed? I, I got the pink slip. The Bible says that I, by, by his stripes I'm healed. Now, you know, I got it right here. I got the pink slip. Faith says it, this is the substance I got here. Hallelujah. I'm hoping to go to heaven. I got. How do you know that? I got a pink slip. I'm not hoping someday maybe I'll get to know. I, my hope is real. I'm just waiting for it to happen. I love this stuff. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Without the word, faith becomes nothing but empty formula. I read that. And it doesn't work okay. The word <coughs> is what supplies you with the faith you need to receive God's blessings. That's why we're in the word every day. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In other words, the truth you know shall make you free. <laughs> All the solutions for what you're going through right now are in the Word of God. That's right. 
you get it in your eyes, in your ears, and in your heart, it will start to talk to you on the inside. You get, like I said, you get an unexpected bill in the mail, and all you say to that bill is, God supplies all my needs according to His riches and glory. The Word helps you think what God thinks. Mark 11, 23, this is a good one. It says, Most assuredly, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Now, in the, in the, um, up there just a little bit, Jesus spoke to the fig tree and said, you, There shall be no fruit on you. Uh, nobody will eat fruit from you from now on and forever. Why? Because, anyway, now watch this. Um, in Ma in Matt 6.31, it says, Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. Who all here has been worrying about something? No, we don't want no, no hands. Okay. Spend time in the scriptures is promised what you're believing for. Did you get that? Spend time in the scriptures that speak to what you're believing for. If you're worried about something, find a scripture that talks to you about that and spend your time thinking that rather than thinking the worry thing. Kick out doubt out of your heart and out of your mouth. Kick out doubt. It says you do not doubt in your heart. Uh, uh, Mark 11.23 says, Talk to situations and say what you believe. 11.14, uh, I just said that. So how about doing that with the hindrances that are in your life? Can you talk to a fig tree and make it die? Yeah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So you can talk to a globe willow and make it heal too. Glory to God. Really, maybe I can talk to my diseased elm. <laughs> Anybody got a diseased elm in their part? Okay. Now, according to Jesus, you can talk to the hindrances in your life and they'll go. Because it says, whosoever. Doesn't it say that in 23? Mm -hmm. Surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says will be done. He'll have whatever he says. Okay. So we need to develop confidence in what we say. Now who all has decided to do that? Well, don't raise your hands. All of you who have decided to do this, okay, to live by faith, to speak faith all the time, sooner or later, like I said, you're going to goof up. So what you need to do is just say, I cancel that thought and that word in Jesus' name. And I go back to the confession I was making just before that. Every time it comes up in your mind, just speak the word to it. Every time you say something negative, cancel that thing out and go back to the word. That's what you can do. And pretty soon, all you'll be thinking is what God's promise says, rather than what your circumstances are. Every one of us are going to go through this. Well, God wouldn't put me through that terrible test. Oh, yes, he would. Jeepers, creepers, man. Jesus went into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights to be tempted by the devil. Who do you think you are? You know, you're going to get, te you're going to get tested. You're going to te the testing of your faith. He said, don't consider some weird, strange thing that you fall into various trials. The testing of your faith is precious. Amen. Why? Because it proves to you that you have some. It does. God will put you through the little test first, you know. And then, then he'll find out what, you know, and he'll lead you on, keep going. Pretty soon you'll be in, in uh, India. <laughs> I wrote down here, don't wait till you're sick to proclaim that you're well. And don't wait till you're broke to proclaim that you are prosperous. Don't wait for the crisis to speak the things forth. Get in the Word and start saying, no. Uh, the word says I am well. I thank you, God, that I am well. I'm healed. I'm walking in divine health every day. So don't wait. 11.24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. I don't know about you. If I, if I was you, I'd take these scriptures home and meditate on them and read them over about 20 times a day for about a week. And just find out what happened in your life. Just, just a little thing, okay? 
to lay hold of, oh, this word receive there in, in the 24th thing says, whatever, you, whatever things you ask in prayer, believe that you receive. Receives means to lay hold of, to take in order to carry away, to claim or procure for oneself and not let go, to seize or apprehend. Amen. Isn't that good? So what, when you receive stuff, it's, a, it's, a, it's an aggressive thing. Believe that you receive, uh, lay hold of, in order to carry it away, claim it or procure it for oneself, and don't let it go. Seize and not apprehend it. And it says um, you will have, that word have means to possess or to possess by faith. What, so what we, verse are you on? Right? In uh, 24, 11, 24 Mark, excuse me. Okay, in Mark 11, 24. And that word have means to possess. So we receive, we lay hold of, to possess something we're believing God for. <coughs> it's mine. Remember those guys used to put stuff in the refrigerator, right? You guys don't do that anymore? Put the scriptures on your fridge oh, yeah. that you're believing God for and stuff like that? Go ahead. Write them down. Sometimes it takes writing them down instead of just memorizing them. And even if you memorize them, I would go back into the Word and read them every once in a while. That's right. Because that word in your eyes is, is different than just speaking them out of your mouth. Read them. Write to yourself and, and something happens. I don't know what it is. It's a supernatural thing. Okay, there's one more aspect of faith. This thing about receiving. I wrote down here, can I pray for my kids like that? Okay. Um, I know a lady named Marilyn Martin. Some of you know Marilyn. She, uh, she prayed over a kid every day. Every day before he went to school. Every day. She prayed the same prayer over him. So, something about, you know, that he'd stay right with God and that he'd get good grades and things like that. He did that. He stayed right with God. He still have his faith. I talked to him, what, a year or two ago, and he's still serving God. He's got a godly wife. He's an engineer in Reno somewhere fixing bridges. That's what he does for a living. He, he, he designs and fixes bridges. He's an engineer. So everything she prayed for him came to pass. Why? Because she was diligent to proclaim those things over him every day. Praise, God. Praise the Lord. And some of you have done that. I know that. We, uh, we prayed for our kids, for their wives when they were five years old. That's right. We prayed for their wives all the time. Glory to God. Look what happened too. Hallelujah. Now, not only does faith receive and believe some, faith fights for stuff. My sister had a baby. Four months premature. Weighed one pound, eight ounces when it was born. It's 11 inches long. Just, just nothing, as big as a pencil, okay? And it, his heart was not hooked to her lungs, so they had to send him down to Stanford to get that thing hooked up, and uh, her eyes they had to have cold probes on, and they said she'd be blind because too much oxygen, they go blind when they're that little. Anybody who's ever had preemies knows this. Mm -hmm. She's not blind. She plays the piano. Mm -hmm. She's 30-some years old. She's... She's just a wonderful girl. I love her. <laughs> Pat painted a picture of her one time. Oh, really a good picture. Anyway, um, this, this thing, she, and I went to her during this whole time, because I was there when the baby was born. I saw it come out, and saw the tubes and crap. And all. It's just, I thought, uh-oh, that baby's dead, right? And so I went to my sister, and she kept having this positive attitude. And I told her, right to her face, I said, man, you're setting yourself up for a fall. When that kid dies, you're going to be really upset. And she just patted me on the back, or on the hand, whatever she did. She says, Matt, the Lord's telling me she's going to be fine. Amen. Ah. Just like that, I think. <laughs> I'm this great man of faith and power, right? I'm telling her kid's going to die. She just pat me on the hand. Don't worry, Matt. God told me she's going to be fine. Amen. And when Connie Jones, her, her, uh, her son, got shot in the head, uh, his, you know, she got, he got shot in the head, and... Everybody told her he was going to die. He wasn't going to make it. And she come into the elevator on her way down. We were going down to get him to surgery. Or he was going to go to surgery. And she told me, I said, what do you... And I'd learned enough from different women I've been around about their kids. I said, what do you believe in God for? And she says, God has, God has told me that he's going to be fine. So that's what we prayed. Amen. And lo and behold, he's still fine. I saw him the other day at, a, at, the, at Ray's funeral. And I went over to Ray's funeral, and he's fine. So, so these, 
It's a fight sometimes. It's a fight when everybody else is saying around you doesn't make any difference. When God has spoken, He has spoken. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about anything else. You can say what He has told you. I don't care if it looks the weirdest, dumbest, goofiest thing, okay? Till we can say with Paul, you know, I have fought the good fight. I have run the race. Uh, now there's a crown of... Right? But you say, but it's hard. Yeah. But it's worth it. That's right. That's right. What I'm saying is easy after a while, but it's still hard. Mm -hmm. But it's worth everything. Till he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. We need to walk by faith so we can please him. So it brings pleasure to his heart and his soul. Praise the Lord. So Lord, we want to bring pleasure to you every, every day. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I know this has been a long uh, thing for our butts on these pews. Mm -hmm. But Lord, I pray that you take the one thing we learned today. Mm -hmm. And make it real to us. Make it real, God. I mean make it real. And I break every hold that the enemy would have on those minds that want to just fluff this off and let it go. I know, God, that you have done something in every life here. And I believe for, for uh, testimonies that come forth just because of it. I thank you for your word, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Matt, while we're doing that, yes. a little praise report. Last week we asked you to pray, everyone to pray for Chris. Yes. And so they did the match. They finished uh, testing the individual in Germany, and they have a perfect 10 match. They right now are sending the bone marrow, and they're sending bone marrow and, and blood. And uh, I don't know how all that works, but they're sending that to California. His parents are on the way to California right now. Oh, praise the Lord. And so, Hallelujah. And I guess they're going to be doing whatever they do there, and then they're going to have like four months in isolation. So he still needs prayer. Yes. But they have a perfect, ten, literally, on however they met, they said it's a 10 match. It's a perfect, match. perfect 10. Hallelujah. God's in the perfect 10s, right? Yeah. Praise, the praise the Lord. Yes. Would you pray over this, please? Father, we thank you that we get to give unto you, Lord. And we do it with joy in our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Ooh, and hallelujah. You invite all of our needs according to your riches and glory by thank Christ you, Jesus. Yes, thank and Lord, we just give you praise again and we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I would like to pray for Lisa's family. Okay. She's going to Grass Valley next weekend to see her relative. She has a relative that is. Um, been pronounced to, to pass away soon with cancer in the next week or two or whatever. Um, none of them are saved. They're Jehovah Witness. They're not open. And that Lisa would be held up in prayer this week while she goes to minister to her family. Lisa? Oh, well, Lisa. Your, your, uh, my grandma. Your grandma? She, she would be with Okay. That there's people speaking <coughs> shorter time, and I'm I speaking as nine to year to year and healing. All right. Well, stand up and pray those things. We'll agree with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. The Lord Jesus, I'm just going to lift my grandmother up to you. Her name is Lorraine. She has cancer, Lord Jesus, and we all come together in agreement that she's going to be healed. Yes. Thank Lord you, God. Yeah. You're just going to heal her, and it's going to be a miraculous healing. Thank you, God. Everybody's going to Thank see God. that, and they're going to want there. what we have, and yeah. that's you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray when I go Amen. there that you can just shine through me, Lord Jesus, and everybody in that family wants what I have, and that's you, and I know they already see you in me, Lord Hallelujah. Jesus, but I pray that they want to confess you as Lord and Savior, that's right. Lord Jesus, Thank you, God. Lord says God that they worship, Lord Jesus, just open their eyes, just to see you, but I mostly pray for my grandma that she will confess you as Lord and Savior. Yes. Amen, that's right. So if she does die, she's going to be up there. And when I die, I get to be with her, yes. Lord. So we're just going to lift her up to Thank you. Thank you, God. Yes. 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 In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, uh, amen. Um, Marvin had a grandson or a cousin or something that was Jehovah's Witness. And he brought him apart and said, listen, I don't care you're Jehovah's Witness or not, I just want you to be a saved Jehovah's Witness. Amen. And this is the way you get saved. And a believer in Jesus. Yeah, and he explained it to him, and the kid got saved. Amen. 
and, and I'm not sure what he did after that, but the kid got, got saved. Amen. He explained it so. It's a good testimony. Somebody was raised their hand. Do you have your hands raised? Nope. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you today. We're meeting at uh, John and Vicky's tonight. Is that right? Oh, I'm so excited. You've never been to John and Vicky's, you need to go. It's really fun. <laughs> and if you want to know where they live, just uh, 14, come and 1456 Jennings. 1456 Jennings. 26. 1426. Go around the corner and turn on Jennings and Do De Loretto's old place, old by their house. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. <coughs> Born the burden of you 25 years ago. <laughs>